A long time ago, in a writing center not so far away, an ordinary writing consultant came in contact with a radioactive tutoring manual. From that day forth, he had the power to collaborate with any writer, the versatility to adjust methodology several times in a single session, and the positive attitude necessary to help cultivate a love of learning in any university. He is the consultant's consultant, and he watches over bustling writing centers everywhere, ready to work with you to tackle any pedagogical problem you may face. In fact, just the other day, in a writing center that may be near you. Therefore, skinny dipping should be considered as the next summer Olympic sport. Furthermore... Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Oh, okay. What's wrong? Well, you really should have a comma after therefore. Okay, what about... And I'm not sure about the phrase skinny dipping... Uh, I think if, you know, if I were writing this, I'd probably write something like competitive nude swimming. Or I could write... And uh, instead of furthermore, uh, you should probably write further. Uh, really, the best way to say this is, thus, uh, competitive nude swimming should be considered by the committee as a new summer... Actually, wouldn't it be better if it were a winter sport? Well... Uh, right, so where was I? Oh, yeah. Thus, competitive nude swimming should be considered by the committee as a new Winter Olympic competition. Further, okay, now we can go on from here. Okay, um, further, the sport would be beneficial not only to... All right, to you know what, I'm going to stop you again. Freeze! Sorry to interrupt this session. I know it's against writing center policy, but I sensed an ineffective consulting strategy, and I just had to jump in. Consultants, consultant, we're saved. Hmm, but we were collaborating so nicely. I mean, we had so many good ideas. Where did we go wrong, consultants, consultant? Well, when you're consulting, you want to make sure the ideas going into the paper belong to the students. Sometimes students need help putting their thoughts into words. But even then, we want the language and the ideas to belong to the student. Otherwise, students won't learn how to become better writers. How can I tell if I'm being too directive, consultant's consultant? Good question. One way to stop yourself from giving too much directions is to approach the session as a conversation and listen to the writer. Why don't you try? Okay, I'll try. Uh, uh, uh. You'll both try. Right, okay. Here we go. So, uh, what did you think of this sentence? Well, I mostly like it, but I do think it could be stronger. Well, I think you did a pretty good job, uh, but there's room to be more academic here. Um, so, what do you think about rewording skinny dipping? Um, I like it, but I'm open to suggestions. Sure, uh, let's see if we can figure this out together. Uh, what's another way to talk about competitive nude swimming? Um, what about the 200 meter nude freestyle? I like that. What do you think of it? I like it too. So, what would you like to work on today? Well, I'm having a lot of problems with this assignment. I finished a draft and got some feedback, but I don't know what a lot of it means. Um... Well, I'm supposed to write about the poem This Is Just to Say by William Carlos Williams, and I started off saying um, in the introduction, Since the dawn of time, people have been eating other people's lunches without asking. My professor crossed that out, but didn't say why. I don't know what the issue is. I really like that sentence. Well, what do you think is wrong with that sentence? Um, I don't know. Um, maybe we can just look at the next thing she marks. I wrote, William's poem would make more sense if he had stolen better food. Plums aren't that good anyways. My professor just circled that and wrote informal, but it sounds good to me. 
Hmm. Yeah. So you wrote, plums aren't that good anyways. Do you hear where it gets informal? No. So you don't hear the part of the sentence that isn't academic? No. If you had to guess what your teacher finds informal, what would you say? Okay, let's go through it word by word to see what you think. Is the problem the word plums? Stop right there. I don't know about you, but I'm plum tired of this ineffective tutoring strategy. Oh, jeez. Were you under there the whole time? I applaud you for not being too directive, but you've crossed over into dangerous territory of being too non-directive. Oh, no. Help me, consultants. Consultants? It's important to maintain a balance between directive and non-directive methodology. Sometimes solely asking questions just, just doesn't work, because sometimes the students just genuinely don't know the answer. Asking the same question again and again may sometimes only frustrate the student. Oh, well where did I go wrong? Let's think back to when this young writer asked you to help identify the informal part of her sentence. She clearly didn't know what the professor meant by writing informal. And you could have pointed out the casual language while also explaining what constitutes informal language in the paper. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I know. My superpower is making sense. Uh, excuse me. I only signed up for a half-hour session, so... Right, right, right. Well, why don't you two restart the session? I'll be right here in case poor pedagogy rears its ugly head again. Okay. Well, like I said, my professor crossed out this part in my introduction. Since the dawn of time, people have been eating other people's lunches without asking. Yeah, I see. Um... And you said you weren't sure why he did that? No, I thought that we were supposed to start out generally and work towards a more specific point. Well, you have the concept down. Uh, one way to do an introduction is to make a broader statement and then gradually get more specific. But starting off with, since the dawn of time, uh, is a little too broad. Uh, so, since the dawn of time in this context is an exaggeration, and you don't want to do that. We can stick with this organization, but let's play with the wording a little bit. Um, do you have any ideas of how to change that? Um, definitely get rid of since the dawn of time. Can we just do that? Maybe start off with often people eat other people's lunches without asking, or sometimes. I think that either of those options works. Uh, let's write it down. Sure. Great job. Your directive by explaining what was wrong and suggesting the student change it. But you also allowed the student to come up with her own ideas. Way to collaborate. A balancing between directive and non-directive methodology can be tricky. Check out Tom Truesdale's essay, Not Choosing Sides, using directive and non-directive methodology in a writing session for some more tips on how to balance these strategies. Looks like my work here is done. Good morning. What did you bring to work on today? I have a paper for purple economics in a post-Barney environment. I need you to fix the grammar. Okay. Uh, so do you want to tell me about the assignment? Well, I understand the assignment, and it's complicated if you don't know the subject. I just need to make sure the grammar is right. All right. Uh, what's your paper about? You wouldn't get it unless you're a purple economics student. I just want it to sound right. Oh, okay. So, do you want to get started then? Yeah, sure. Okay. <clears throat> purple economics have changed forever since the beginning of time, but everything changed in the post-Barney period. After the wake in the post-Barney period, purple economics were overrun with vegetarian mass production and the PBSification of America. Purple economics is the money value of purple products that have value with money, and therefore are economic. Uh, okay, uh, so what would you say is your thesis? Um, that last sentence. Cool. Uh, I'm not totally sure what you mean by money value here. It's a technical term. Trust me, it's fine. Well, uh, 
I'm not the expert in this area, so I think you would know better than I what to say. Yeah. So let's just go over the grammar. I just want it to be right. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's just do that. So I see you're missing a comma five lines down. Mm. Whoa, let's put the brakes on this train. <laughs> the consultants, consultants, what, what are, are you, you doing, doing here? here? Your session was about to get mired in mechanical proofreading, and I'm here to rescue both of you. But consultants, consultant, I mean, I don't know anything about this subject. How can I help this student with higher order concerns if I don't know what she's talking about? I understand your concern, valiant consultant, but never fear. When confronted with unfamiliar subjects, we as consultants must rely on our greatest strength. Extensive knowledge of the Oxford English Dictionary. Oh no! Our ability to engage in conversation with students. You should admit when you don't know much about the subject. Uh, but that doesn't mean you can't engage with the material. Ask students writing on unfamiliar subjects questions about the subject of their paper, and make sure to carefully listen to their answers. Those answers will not only inform you better, but might, might help make them focus their arguments. Okay, let's give it a shot. So, what did you bring in to work on today? Well, I have this paper on purple economics, but you won't get it. Well, I admit, I don't know much about purple economics. Can you explain it to me? Sure. Um, basically, purple economics is the fallout of when blue and red economics combined and essentially changed the world. That's pretty cool. So, what's your argument? Well, I'm trying to say that purple economics radically changed after the creation of Barney. Basically, everything went from being based on meat prices to being focused on vegetation. Oh, that's interesting. I never knew that. Let's see if what you told me is reflected in your paper. Tutoring in unfamiliar subjects can be intimidating. But in the essay, Tutoring Unfamiliar Subjects, Alexis Greiner reminds consultants that we can offer reader-based feedback, which can be very effective for global concerns like organization and transitions. <laughs> What did you bring in to work on today? Well, I have this paper on whether Kirk or Picard is the better captain, and my professor said I need to go to the writing center. Okay. Uh, did your professor give you any specific feedback? Um, yeah. He said, wait, let me find it. Um, okay. Here it is. Your thesis is vague and your argument is ill-defined. You clearly haven't taken into account the commanding presence and maturity of Picard in your analysis. You also clearly haven't proofread this. Go to the writing center and have them fix it for you. So, can you, you know, fix it? Well, that's not really what we do here. <laughs> it's just that this guy hates me, you know? And he refuses to accept any opinion other than his own. I mean, if I think Kirk's better than Picard, I should be allowed to say it. So you're telling me that your professor only accepts arguments with which he agrees? Uh, yeah, and he totally hates me because of it. Oh, well, he sounds like a jerk. Yeah. Still, he's grading your paper, so we'll just try to make him happy so he'll get off your back. Great. Hold it right there. Looks like we're heading into dangerous territory here. Consultants, consultant, what's wrong? Negotiating the relationship between students, consultant, and professor is a delicate balance. It is understandable that you want to support the student peers you work with uh, by taking sides that can potentially cause irreparable damage between both the student-professor relationship and the relationships students and professors have with the writing center. What should I do then? Well, you should always remain sympathetic. Try to resist taking sides or bad-mouthing the professor. Instead, work with the comments as the teaching tools they're meant to be. Ask the students if the professor has any more specific criticism or an assignment sheet that might grant them further insight into the way prof the professor commented the way that he did. And if you think there is a serious problem, talk to the writing center director. They have the experience working with faculty that could really help. Why don't you try this appointment again? Sure, let's give it a shot. 
So it sounds like your professor had some problems uh, with your overall argument here. Yeah. So why don't we go back to your thesis and see if he had some specific comments. Okay, sure. Um, here's my thesis. Kirk is better than Picard because he is brave and has an Iowan huckster charm that gets him out of any situation. And my professor wrote, what about Picard? Okay, uh, do you have the assignment sheet? Yeah, yeah. Um, it says, this assignment requires you to argue which captain was the most effective at leading the Enterprise. Argue your points, but be sure to acknowledge the dissenting point of view. Oh, all right, there it is. I see where you and your professor might be disconnected huh. here. Uh, see how he wants a dissenting point of view? Yeah, um, I wasn't sure what that meant. Okay, basically that means he wants you to acknowledge why other people would disagree with you. Uh, that's why he wants you to discuss Picard's qualities too. Oh, so he wasn't saying I should change my argument. That's right. Uh, see, your professor doesn't hate you. He just wants to follow the directions. <sighs> that's good to know. <laughs> So, my professor said my content was great, and I had some really original ideas, but my grammar was making it hard for some of those things to come across. I guess I'm a bit stylistic, but it seems like there's some technical problems, too. Mm hmm If you want to be an effective member in an academic discourse community, it's imperative you comply with the parameters of the language. Actually, he said he saw a lot of issues with subject-verb agreement. Let's peruse the commentary and see what errors we can detect. Okay, well here, um, I wrote, Fortunately, most people have not thought it advisable to watch Mean Girls 2. He put a comma after fortunately, but I don't know why. Fortunately functions as a disjunct, uh, and commas usually follow that part of speech. Next. Right. A disjunct. Okay, well, um, so here I have, while not a cinematographic masterpiece, Mean Girls does prevent the parent trap from being the high point of Lindsay Lohan's career. This is very important. He circled the word this. That's because you're using this as a demonstrative pronoun. Uh, you have too many instances of demonstrative pronouns throughout your paper, so your nouns are getting lost. Okay, but what's a demonstrative pronoun? This. <laughs> Just a little grammar humor for you there. Oh, here you've written, unless Regina George could predict the future, she had no way of knowing Gretchen Wiener would actually make fetch happen. Your professor crossed out your comma after unless, because unless functions as a subordinating conjunction. This is fun. Ah, desist! First, let me congratulate you on that fine joke you made about demonstrative pronouns. Thank you. But unfortunately, much like the nouns to which the pronouns in this student's sentence refer, your grammatical lessons are getting lost in your jargon. Yeah, I haven't known what a subordinating conjunction is since, like, fifth grade. Part of your role as a writing consultant is to function as an approachable source of knowledge for the writers. When you fill your conversation with words writers don't know, it puts you on a pedestal above them and makes you unapproachable. You have to be aware that some students may not have the vocabulary that you do. Instead of relying on grammatical terms themselves, try explaining the functions of the parts of speech. Okay, that makes sense. Let's try again. Okay, um, could, could we talk about my professor circling the word this, please? Right. Um, so what does this stand for in your sentence? Um... You know, I guess I'm not sure. Well, you say this is very important. Uh, so what is very important? The point that I just made in the sentence before. Okay, good. Uh, so what happened here is that just like you didn't know what this stood for at first, your reader might also get confused. Oh. Uh, instead of letting the word this stand by itself, explain what you mean. Okay, um, so I would say this point is very important. Exactly, great. Well done, team. Be sure to continue to be transparent with your terminology, and, as always, right on. Yeah, right, right on! on.